Some of the factors affecting sample size um, would be things like uh, sampling risk, which is based on the audit team's judgment. Um, so in this case, you, you, real, you usually see uh, that uh, the risk is usually set too low. Um, and it has an inverse effect on the sample size. So as sampling risk decreases, sample risk, I'm sorry, sampling size increases. So it's an inverse relationship. So remember the sampling meter, right? If you want to reduce your sampling risk, you're going to adjust the sample size. The tolerable rate of deviation, which this is the level of control risk, um, and the degree of assurance that the auditor requires. So if you, again, think about, if you want a greater confidence level, right? That, so for example, 95% confidence level, you're going to reduce your tolerable rate of deviation. And so as a result, you're going to look at more items, right? So um, you decrease the tolerable rate of deviation and you, uh, so the effect on your sample size is that you're going to look at more items, right? Because you want a greater confidence around your sample. So it's an inverse relationship. As your, as your acceptable tolerate, tolerable rate of deviation decreases, your sample size increases, right? Because what that basically says, when you decrease your tolerable deviation rate, you're willing to accept less risk, right? And if you accept less risk, you need more information. So as if you just think about it intuitively. The expected population deviation rate, as I said, this is, prob this is based on the auditor's experience. Uh, more than likely coming from prior audits, um, or if it's a new client based on the auditor's initial test of internal controls in a pilot, in a planning phase, right? Um, so there's a direct relationship. As your expected population deviate, uh, deviation rate increases, so you're expecting higher amounts of exceptions, then your sample size are going, is going to increase. Right, so it's a direct relationship. If I know, if it's known to me that based on prior experience, that this, this, this particular control that I'm testing, there's this level of exceptions. I know this from prior period. I'm going to plan for that. So I'm going to look at more items. Right? Because by saying that I have this expectation of, of, of deviation, that increases my risk. Right. So I have to compensate for that to keep my risk at an acceptable level, so I'm going to look at more items. So a sample size increases. Population size, uh, the number of applications of a control policy or procedures to a transaction is going to be direct. So as population size increases, sample size increases. However, that is not always the case. Once the population reaches a, a, a certain level, it's negligible, right? So it's not always that you're going to a more, I have a larger population, so I'm going to look at more transactions. There are other things that you have to consider that we went over, your sampling risk, your tolerable deviation, your expected population deviation. So, and, you know, that is going to determine. Because when you, if you think about it uh, from a practical standpoint, if you deem internal controls are effective, it doesn't, if, if, and, and you've tested internal controls and you're like, these controls really work, the client has strong and effective internal controls. If the client has 500,000 transactions, those internal controls are effective. They're going to operate the same way all the time. So if all, based on your prior experience and what you know about that client and the internal controls, what you're willing to accept in terms of risk, that doesn't mean now you have to look at 50,000 items, right? Because it, the, think about internal controls. The process happens the same way. It should happen the same way all the time. So that you can't just look at the size as the only factor, right? You have to consider the expected population deviation rate, the sampling risk, and the tolerable deviation um, rate. Any questions? The, so you can't just assume that because the client has 500,000 items, that means that I have to look at even more transactions, right? 
because you're going to set the number of transactions, and you'll see this when you're looking at the tables. You're going to set the number that you look at based on your sampling risk, your tolerable rate of deviation, and your expected population deviation rate. That's really going to drive what you, your sample size is going to be. Right? And again, as I said, internal controls, the process happens or should happen the same way all the time. So whether you have 500 transactions or 500,000 transactions, if your internal controls are effective and you as an auditor judge that you can rely on those internal controls, then basically what are you saying? It's, it's happening the same way. So once I get a, a comfort level around my tolerable rate of deviation, right, what I'm willing to accept, then I don't need to look at 500,000 transactions just because there are 500,000 transactions necessarily. So that's where the tables come in and you'll see the relationship. So I, there's a caveat with the population.